shaping our national character. The earliest white settlers in this country were quick to adopt Indian ways of dealing with the harsh elements of the new world. They must certainly have learned more from the Indians than the Indians learned from them. The men who framed our Constitution are said to have drawn inspiration from tribal practices of the Iroquois League, the concept of a union of sovereign states, and the principle of government by the consent of the governed. The nobility and valor of the great warrior chiefs, men like Wabasha, Pontiac, Tecumseh, and Black Hawk, like Crazy Horse, and Sitting Bull, and American Horse, Cochise, and Chief Joseph, will always hold an honored place in our history. Nearly half our states and many hundreds of our cities and towns bear Indian names. Numerous Indian words and phrases have become a part of American language and American philosophy. And still the paradox exists. Alexis de Tocqueville, that 19th century French traveler who seemed to know so much about America, more than Americans knew about themselves, was outspoken in his admiration for the Indian race and in his disapproval of their treatment. He said, in the little they have done, he wrote, the Indians have unquestionably displayed as much natural genius as the people of Europe in their greatest undertakings. But, he added, nations as well as people require time to learn, whatever their intelligence and whatever their zeal. The Indians have been ruined by a competition which they did not have the means of sustaining. They have become average. Their health is so poor that their rate of infant mortality is nearly twice that of any other racial group in this country. That these conditions can be allowed to prevail among a people uniquely entitled to call themselves the first Americans, a people whose civilization flourished here for centuries before the, the name America was thought of, this is nothing less than a national disgrace. Poverty, undereducation, and disease are evil forces in their own right. But perhaps their most destructive effect in a society like ours is that they breed a practical loss of freedom. This book will be released once again in all its power for the greater glory of this country. That is our goal. That is our goal, and only then can we rest. Only then will the Indian be truly free. Perhaps no man has better defined that goal of freedom than the immortal chief Joseph of the Nez Perce tribe.